And now to other parts of Africa, delegates of developing countries have reacted to the United Nations Climate Talks Agreement on a $300 billion a year for humanity's fight against climate change. The deal is aimed at helping poor nations cope with the ravages of global warming, intense negotiations in the city where industry first tapped oil. COP29 President Mukhtar Babayev gathered the deal into acceptance before any nation had a chance to speak. When they did, they blasted him for being unfair to them. The deal for not being enough and the world's rich nations for being too stingy. She, they added that the amount to be mobilized is abysmally poor and said that developed countries are forcing developing ones to adapt without accounting for the need for economic growth. We walk back home with 300 and we say that the developed countries are taking the lead. This is an insult to what the convention says. Should I remind us of what the convention says, that it noted that developed countries had the largest share of historical and current global emissions. It also said that the developed countries would take the lead, and this lead is climate finance. That the developing country is saying that it's taking the lead with $300 billion till 2035 is a joke. And it's not something we should take lightly. I do not think it's something we should clap our hands and force us to take it. it was now, joining us to look at global warming and other issues is a Nigerian non-governmental organization dedicated to addressing climate change through data-driven solutions, community engagement, and advocacy. Uh, thanks for joining us, Jolo Tobechuku Prosper. Thanks for joining us on the news. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be here. All right, before we get into uh, local issues, let's just talk about highlights that came up from the 20, this year's uh, COP29. And you heard uh, the lady there speaking about um, the $300 billion a deal for a developing country. It has sparked outrage and concerns by many. What is your view concerning that specifically? I mean, $300 billion is ridiculous um, for the amount of damages that has been done, especially in developing countries you really cannot quantify it and that's the truth i mean how do you begin to pay loss and damage how do you begin to invest into renewable energy i, I mean this, this 300 billion may sound much but when when you when you calculate the loss and damage for every community that has been affected by climate change and also you now look futuristically and looking into um you are looking into adaptation plans. You are trying to rebuild, remodel some of these cities. I mean, 300 billion is ridiculous. The, the least we would have expected would have been probably $1.5 trillion. And, and based on evaluation, that could be encouraging. But, but considering, in fact, even to host COP alone, I mean, it is almost going to $100 billion. So, and all the entire conference of parties, side events, and everything. And, and then you're talking about 300 billion to mm. satisfy the entire scope of climate adaptation and loss and damage is ridiculous. And, and I think a lot of countries have been right. vocal about that. Yeah. Okay, uh, there have been so much talk right now as regards to restricting, uh, you know, uh, there's a whole issue about climate change to about 1.5 degrees Celsius above uh, industrial mm -hmm. range. Um, how feasible is this? And um, so far, how would you say the fight against uh, climate change has gone over time? Well, the, the, the major challenge is that um, the willpower from a lot of countries uh, is, is not there. And that's the truth. Secondly, the visibility of the Paris Agreement, which is reducing temperature below 1.5 degrees. I mean, so far, we have been recording historical high-level temperatures in Nigeria, in other parts of the world. So, And that's why you see the ag agitation around COP29 is because a lot of these promises and a lot of these um, models and frameworks are almost like just stuck. You know, countries have not really made real efforts, feasible effort, especially if you are a grassroots organization, oh. you understand that we still have a lot of challenge in a lot of countries executing policies oh. to help reduce the temperature. So we have a long way to go. All right. Let's just still talk about um, COP29, which is uh, just uh, still fresh on the lips of um, environmentalists and, of course, all stakeholders. And the president just um, returned um, over the weekend. Uh, 
uh, COP29, there's another one slated for next year. So far, do you really think that um, this um, summit has provided the needed um, you know, change for developing nations and the global community as a whole, but specifically, let's localize it here to Nigeria? Yeah. Oh, well, well, the truth is that, first of all, we let's not deceive ourselves, right? We, of course, it is necessary for the world to meet. It is necessary for the world to talk about these issues, but COP, Conference of Parties, has really been politicized. Um, in fact, this, this particular COP29 was meted with a lot of controversy around coming to COP29 and brokering oil deals. So it's the same thing that happened in COP28 at Dubai, where you are coming to talk about reducing fossil fuel, but a lot of delegates come there to champion oil deals. So largely, personally, I, I mean, I, I believe that First of all, for us to be serious about this climate change, the conference of parties, delegates should be cut down by almost 70 percent because you can't be talking about reducing fossil fuel emission and then you the carbon footprint for COP alone, as the amount of private jets, the amount of cars, the amount of movement, carbon emitted, you know, is even more than some countries emitting in, in, in an entire year. Right. So I think that that aspect is there. Secondly, right. there's so much talk. Oh. At, without action and countries should be held accountable at the local level and that's what we call the ndc's which All is right. the nationally determined contributions every country should have their own cop but that, that's my opinion so i don't i don't think we've made a lot of a lot of progress i don't think so all right uh, we look forward uh, to the cop 30 and i hope some of these changes that we uh, want to see um happen uh, you know not just in nigeria or the african developing countries but across um, the globe we have been speaking with joe lu to Bechuku prosper who joined us all the way from biosa many thanks for your time Joe Lu. thank you sir Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.